game about to tip off here on the. It's a massive game, and I'm going to say the same thing for teams like Richmond and VCU and Rhode Island. If you're on the bubble right now, four weeks away from Selection Sunday, every game should be treated like a play-in game. And here's another thing. If Jerry Palm has Richmond, VCU, and Rhode Island squarely on the bubble, this is a big picture thing you have to keep in mind for the Atlantic 10. If Dayton continues to run away like a freight train and wins the Atlantic 10 Conference Tournament and other things happen and these teams don't win games they're supposed to win, the Atlantic 10 could be a one-bid league if Dayton gets the automatic bid. More the reason to find out who's going to win today between Richmond and VCU right here on CBS hey, Good afternoon, Sports. everybody. John Sadak alongside the coach and Bob Wenzel. This is a rivalry game. There's drama. There's energy. VCU won it decisively on its home floor the last time around, but enters this game without Marcus Evans, out with a knee injury. How does that impact this game? Fifth-year senior takes a lot away in terms of their ball handling. However, they are a team that uses 11 guys, so having one guy out does not impact them as much as it would some other teams. They impact teams in a big way with their defense. Nick Terrence. The namesake of the playing surface here on the Robin Center. Here are the starting lineups. Notable change here, Bob Wenzel. Bones Highland and Vince Williams start for VCU. Marcus Evans doesn't start. He will not play. Highland brings outside shooting. Vince Williams brings pressure on the ball in the full court press. You'll see bow ties galore throughout the building. You'll see intensity on the floor, including Grant Golden to the left for Richmond. He had a dynamite game, led the game with 24. One of the few silver linings when VCU dominated the Spiders in the first meeting. The score was 39 up at halftime, and VCU went on a spurt that dominated the second half of play. VCU probing Marco Santos Silva. It's not free, and here come the Spiders. Blake Francis right to the rack denied. And a power play for VCU. A tumble, then the kick gets fed. Ugly miss, might have got a piece there. Look at the two guards in the backcourt. 5'9 and 6 foot, and we're being generous. They're going to have to use their quickness to go against the taller guards from VCU. Another steal, Gilliard's got it. Leads the nation in that category. 3.4 per game. You wonder how VCU's defense will do without Evans, whose offensive production had been down. But a preseason first team, all defensive player. Sherrod, 42% from three on the range. He only had one made bucket total, five points when these teams met a few weeks ago. Home courts matter in college basketball. The senior center for VCU, the Robin Center for Richmond. 7,201 here, every seat filled. With three on the timer, Van cuts to the cup. And now with the make, Havoc can be employed. Let's see if they double team right away. Sometimes what Mike Rhodes does is he just sees what team's going to do. And there you see bad pass immediately. Turnover. Last time they played, Richmond did not have that many turnovers, but they only shot 25% in the second half. Mike Rhodes, head man for VCU, lamented the lack of urgency in a stunning and big-time loss to George Mason on Thursday. He said it's unacceptable. How can you not get fired up to play at this time of year? If we play like that Saturday at Richmond, Richmond will crush us. <laughs> well, A.J. Wilson of George Mason had a lot to say about that. Had five block shots in the game. That is huge. He's got 80 on the year. A great lead in Santo Silva. Nobody steps up. Golden and Sherrod both went for the double team. Nobody covering the back area. Richmond Spiders have won three in a row, six of eight. They're ten and two on their home floor. Sherrod. 
Nothing to it. When you gamble on defense, sometimes you're late arriving for a three-point shooter. And Sherrod, you need to be early, if anything. Spider send a sub to the table. Solomon Caressi. Jenkins threads the needle. Santo Silva with the left hand off. Francis. McClang, Sherrod, Ted Gilliard saves it. Another chance. It's raining threes. Nick Sherrod. Bones Highland. Feel the buzz in this building. Oh, that's for sure. And a big steal. Numbers. Van attacks Francis. Van made the right play. He had a guy on his left, but a risky pass it would have been. Oh, what a move. Another move. Behind the back, Gilliard. And then Golden changes hands. they met there were two big runs in the game a Richmond surge to even it at halftime and a VCU spurt to take the game they are 12 games above 500 for the first time since that 29 win sweet 16 team that took the A-10 tournament title in 2011 last two seasons they were 20 lost teams two years in a row Santos Silva kick Highland wants it He's been the league's best shooter at conference play. Getting sped up a bit here and a flat shot off. VCU put back no for Van. Out of bounds. Richmond ball. VCU has gotten you close to the basket several times and have come up empty. That is not a good sign for them. Action in the paint around the rim. Four guys, two each going after it. Richmond gets the call that time. That was something Mike Rhodes lamented about the loss against George Mason getting killed on the boards in the game and the inability to finish plays like that. Richmond is a very good half-court offensive team. They flow in their offense beautifully. There are back doors, there are threes, there's all kind of stuff going on. Nathan Kale wants it. Nice feed, but a strip. Williams had night Bones Highland on his right and didn't give it up. Right here, he tries to go through traffic. Several spiders in the way. And that's going to be a turnover. And that's a gutsy charge to take for Blake Francis. When to pass, when not to pass. Judgment required. Gustafsson, number 22, in the game right now. Excellent defensive player for Richmond. Golden out also. That takes away from their post offense. Caressi not nearly as good. Kale snaps. Hesitation, seven to shoot. And travel. Well, they got him the second time. He traveled the first time. He touched it also. What do you think of the Rams' chances to go dancing? I think there's a lot of games to be played between now and the end of the year. And Mike Rhodes' team is a good team. Yeah, last year, they're 16-2 in the league. So a 17-7 and record is very good, but a little below what they were expecting this season. They could be they could be first four out today and in tomorrow. Isaac Van taking it strong here. He has had a wonderful career in VCU. Just give it and follow your pass. A little hesitation dribble gets him all the way to the goal. Golden did not want to foul here, and I think he did the wise thing. They cannot afford foul trouble for their best interior offensive guy. Gustafson is his first, and Van cans the N1. 79% shooter. Gilliard's been hounded. 
by the freshman phenom in Highland, but he's handled it pretty well up the floor. So far, but it can have a cumulative effect on wearing you down a little bit. Highland 6'5", Gilliard's 5'9". Jump get it, corner, Francis. And a great box by Sims. The two threes Francis has taken in this game have been pretty brick. Not even close. Sims. One and done's mounting for VCU. Oh, Francis. Woo. That is some movement and some good D also on him. First pass, Burton cleans it up and he'll go to the line. The super athletic freshman. The problem for VCU sometimes is they extend all over the place and then they give up offensive rebounds. Santos Silva trying to take the charge, but clearly that was a block. Big things from Chris Mooney about this young man. Burton is a guy, 6'7", has some real ability. They think he's going to have a wonderful career here. Kind of just getting started, playing better in the last four or five games than he has all year. His first 16 games, it was less than three points per. In his last seven, almost nine points per. When they first met, Chris Mooney only played him for seven minutes, the fewest of any conference game. And he told us that he thought Tyler Burton could be a difference against VCU today. Yeah, he wasn't ready for that intensity in that game at that time. He is now, though. So he misses, and VCU is missing Marcus Evans. Injured his left knee Thursday against George Mason. He has sprained the MCL on his left knee a month ago. He tweaked that knee in the early stage on Thursday, and then a knee-on-knee -knee collision in the later stage of the game. So a lot of injuries, but that guy has scored 2,000 points. First at Rice, then transferred to VCU. That's a big number. They are missing him on the floor. You annotated how it's defense more than offense. But his voice is going to be necessary in the huddles. VCU trying to find seams. Single digits on the timer with regularity. Off the double the screen. A mismatch against Golden Highland. Had to adjust and twinked it too much. Good help side by Grant Golden there. Got bumped, tried to sell it a bit. Douglas in now, number four for VCU. He takes over for Marcus Santos Silva. He has a hard job guarding this man, Grant Golden. Golden trying to back him up. Help comes right through and into the double. Jump ball. Now Richmond's got it with five to shoot. What do you want here? He tries to go baseline. The help comes quickly. And when that happens, he's got nowhere to go. And line out of bounds play. Pass it, follow your pass, and get it back. Wojcik can shoot, but that one was altered. Out of bounds. But where should the shot clock be? They never hit iron. It didn't look like there was a possession exchange. And yes, Lamar Simpson, our head referee, is holding him three fingers. They're going to put three on the timer. Wojcik comes off the screen, hits nothing, you're right. The ball was out of bounds. So the official's right on it. This is a catch and shoot situation here. Wojcik has no time. And a shot clock violation. Not a bad possession for Chris Mooney's team. Three seconds to go, what you don't want is a turnover or a wild shot that gets blocked and pushed down to the other end. That said, Richmond hasn't hit a field goal in approaching four minutes. They got off hot. The defense of VCU has settled in. Francis ready to set back in. Curry can take the ball to the basket, number 11. He's very quick. Island. Gilliard helps turn him over. Gilliard's got two steals already in the game. Nation's leading steel player. Off the double opposite Burton. That's a tough shot. He had a sense of where he was, didn't he? Golden. Does VCU need a timeout? That's 200. 
155 pounds rolling down the middle. It's time for poise for VCU. The ball's moving. They're unselfish, but they're not probing. The dead ball means a medium, but it feels like this is a, a Creston avalanche for Richmond. Gilliard. Wave it off. Offensive foul. Richmond doubling up VCU at the Robin Center, 18 to 9. If we take a look at today's Reese's player profile, the Steel's maven, Jacob Gilliard. He's a good player, he's a good scorer, second on the team in points, and we're going to show you a play right here that just happened. You can be the official. Now watch, freeze it right there. The defensive player is outside of the restricted arc. That's good. The only problem is, I think the player was in the air already. Is he in the air? No, his foot's on the ground. Again, the officials make the proper call. Had Gilliard been in the air when the defender came over, it would have been a foul on the defense. And so Gilliard's got his first. He's impacted the game with two dimes and two steals. Also has a couple of rebounds. Richmond out rebounded VCU nine to three. Well, what he's doing right here, there's a class at Richmond called negotiating, and he's trying to negotiate with the official right there. <laughs> Oh, nice cut by Santos Silva. I think he was shocked to be that open. Yeah, the help came over quickly by Sherrod. Santos Silva looks a little unsure of himself in this game, which is extremely unusual. Well, Grant Golden got the better of him when these teams met a few weeks ago. That was one of the few bright spots for Richmond, and you can feel the looseness that's evolved for Richmond, and it seems like there, there's a bit of a tight factor for VCU. Well, what's happening right now, Mooney is doing a good job of getting Grant Golden in and out of the game so that he doesn't get exhausted playing the frenetic style that's happened so far in this game. Richmond is playing Matt Grace. He only plays seven and a half minutes a game. He set that screen, catches the ball here wearing 15, former hockey player in his native Canada. Gilliard, his first shot try of the game. Grace tied up. Now jump ball. Grace got away with murder on that. He pushed Santos Silva right underneath the basket when the ball was in the air. Santos Silva not complaining because they got possession here. Young team, right? That's juniors, seven of them. They should be good this year and next year. And that includes 4,000 point scores. Santos Silva wants the ball. Jenkins throws it up himself and drains it. It's better for Jenkins to have the ball in this game so far. He has not taken many shots, and he's the very best pull up guy on this team. Their second leading scorer, who has been hot of late. And Richmond read that pressure. Look at that Wonder. ball movement. Man, that is. Like, they made like seven passes before a dribble happened. And there, turnover, followed by a turnover. Sims is a normal starter for most of the year, coming off the bench now, still adding what he does, which is aggressive defense. He's a small foreman. He was moved to the bench after he shot very poorly in the game against Richmond. There's only one of five, three points. Came off the bench at Rhode Island and has done so ever since. And Rhode made the kick. Look at Darianta Jenkins here with his first. Terrific pass by Gilliard. Guys on the weak side fell asleep a little bit on that one. Gilliard was in a bad way, up in the air, nowhere to go, and found a KO. K.O., who had the biggest leap in scoring in the A-10 from two years ago to last year. His best game this season, one of Richmond's biggest wins. That was at Rhode Island. And he went from 19 and 11, his first career double-double. Clark in, extremely inexperienced. Number 12, the point guard in the left corner. And a travel. Second time. He is having a hard time dealing with the opposite postman coming over and helping him. 
Sando Silva normally very, very steady when he gets the ball in the lane. This is very unusual for him to be getting travel calls. And Mike Rhodes is going to have to watch. He's very close to getting a warning. He was riding Wally Ruteki that entire time for about 30 seconds. Incredibly hard, screaming about three seconds. ECU foul number 21, Jared McAllister, his first team score. The foul to Jared McAllister is his first. Mike Rhodes, a fiery coach. He and Chris Mooney, longtime friends. First knew each other as teenagers in the youth basketball circuit, became more friendly playing summer ball together in Philadelphia. Now their son's teammates in the AAU ranks. Nice leave. KO back to Golden. Santos Silva sweeping banker. He can use both hands in there, and he did that time. If there's an indispensable guy for VCU, he's the guy. Because Douglas comes in after him is not an offensive threat at all. On the perimeter, you got a ton of guys that can do a lot of the same stuff. Four made threes for Sherrod. VCU. Richmond doing it from deep and doubling up their cross -town And offensively, he was not much of a factor the first time they played over at the Siegel Center where he grew up playing. His grandfather was a star. His dad was a star in college as well. His dad in the Hall of Fame at VCU, time with the New York Knicks as well. And Nick Sharon missed most of last year with a torn ACL. They want Santo Silva to get touches. McAllister. There you see the numbers, the rebound disparity. What do rebounds mean to you? What's, what's the value in that? <laughs> do you have an hour? <laughs> <laughs> What I liked about that last play, John, this is great here. What I liked about the last play, Santo Silva gave it up. Four-point play opportunity. And Mike Rhodes continues to boil. He's calling for a flop. He wants a flop on this. Great play by KO. Perfect rotation by Blake Francis. Look at that hustle by KO. Looked like Santo Silva went right by him. And you know, the, the visual signal for a flop this year is palms up and getting your hands up and down. And uh, Mike thought that that was the case. Instead, it's the second foul on Marco Santo Silva. So he goes to the bench. Vince Williams comes back on. Douglas is playing the center position now. Hard to go inside, outside with Douglas. He's not a threat. Tapped out. Jenkins hot potato. Richmond's got it with numbers. Francis transition. He's not had a great shooting start. One of five for those attempts from deep. Jenkins and Van are the two guys who need to do some scoring right here for BCU. They're most experienced players. Oh, beautiful. Hey, man. Francis the Yoro snaps corner. Sharon. I got one long. Island shovels. Oh! Tough shot. Gold in the foul. That'll be his first. Bones Highland with the ball, a little shovel pass. This was a very tough play. Douglas did a good job of keeping that ball from being a turnover, but he's not a great free throw shooter. And 59% in more minutes here 
For Matt Grace giving a breather to Golden. You like this? I, I really like what uh, Mooney is doing here. He has taken Golden out a bunch of times when it gets up and down three or four times in a row without any stoppage of play. He's thinking long run here. He's increased his efficiency dramatically. In their last seven games, Golden's averaging over 26 per 40 minutes. Yeah, so well, that's selected time on the that's floor. A, that's, that's a little deceiving statistic. I mean, you, you can, you know, if a guy plays two minutes and he scores four points, it, it, is he going to score 80 points in the game? No, that kind well, of but if you play 25 finish. minutes, you're leading the lead. That's not how it works. That's how it works. That is a home court win for sure. The largest lead of the game for Richmond. This is a home court rim right here. That thing goes around, I think, 720 degrees, 360 twice. Foul goes to Francis. This is first. Gerard. He's been the hot hand. Hesitation there for Francis. Bad pass. Man on the trot right to the rim against Burton. And what a follow. A seven to one. Only plays five minutes a game. Burton, a nice crossover, not free. This is how VCU can get back in the game. Vital here. Jenkins, though, pops it up. Loose on the deck. From his knees. Gilliard surveys. Slashes down the lane. And can't finish. Frantic pace. Guys are feeling it fatigue right now. Stepping into it. Three more for Bayon. That's the first made three of the game for VCU. Van and Jenkins have to do it. A few heat check moments for Sharon and unanswered for the Rams. Island beats Grace badly off the bounce. You gotta love Ward's activity on the offensive glass, though. Highland, not enough for Ward 20. Boy, Highland looks one way, goes the other. That's beautiful. And watch this ride. It is all over Burton's head. That had to be called. Good spurt by VCU. Richmond has kept people in the last three or four games in the 50s. VCU only 24 to this point. Solid D. Golden finds Gilliard. Seven made threes for the Spiders. So it's 21 to three from downtown in this game. Richmond is getting quality shots in the break and in the half court set. Golden attacking off the bounce. Burton. He can lead. Strong. Bucket. Steel. Williams steps back. No 
nobody on the glass. Five white jerseys, defensive rebounding. Chris Moody holds up five fingers on the sideline. He wants them to slow it down here. Last three minutes, he does not want things to change. Burton is golden cuts. Pulls up at the elbow. Back to Highland is yet to score for VCU. Gilliard hounded by Highland. Sharad pointing, screaming, send the ball the opposite way. Golden gets fed. Double comes. Five to shoot. He steps through. So far for Grant. And four assists. He has more assists than BCU does as a team. Awesome, huh? Experienced player. He's a junior. He's been playing a long time. The G and G guys, Gilliard and Golden, have been around a long time for that coach. Chris Mooney believes that this junior class that Golden is part of could go down as one of the greatest classes in the history of the program. And I think part of that is because adding Blake Francis to the mix right. on the transfer route. A lot of ways to get guys, right? Recruit freshmen, recruit junior college players, use the transfer portal to get players. And there is Mr. Francis. He's been out for a long time. Gilgit's still in. Gilgit rarely comes out of the game. Plays the second most minutes in the A-10. Ward playing with two fouls over Golden. It's a tough shot. He's a good player. He's going to be a very good player for them. And remember VCU, perhaps their best defensive player, Marcus Evans, out today on the bench, not in uniform. Okay, back to the line. That'll be number two on Vince Williams. BCU foul number 10, Vince Williams, the second. So fouls piling up on the Rams. They're very deep, Coach. That's one of the great strengths. But it feels like there's a ripple effect in terms of identity with the absence of Evans today. Yeah, I think so, especially on the perimeter, you know, trying to guard Francis and Gilliard because that is he right there. Mark is Evans, and the knee is the problem. And uh, it's too bad for him and for them in a big, big game like this that he's unable to go. Remember, he also had issue last year in the NCAA tournament. He did play, but was bothered by a knee injury when they lost to UCF. 16-2 last year in the conference, 25-8 overall. Last year, Richmond 13-20, 6-12. So big, big turnaround for the Spiders. Eight to shoot. Highland looking for that first bucket. Whispers the twine. VCU has missed its last six shot tries from the field. You got to credit the defense of Richmond. They are all over the three point line. They had allowed the ball to go inside and let Grant Golden guard Mark DeSanto Silver by himself. And it didn't hurt them. So as a result, the three point accuracy has been erased in this game. That's a big, big factor. Nine unanswered by Richmond. VCU just endured its worst loss of the year to George Mason on Thursday. And a travel. Grant Golden on offense wants the ball because he's being guarded by the uninitiated, shall we say, Ward, who's only a freshman but 6'9. 58 seconds to go. Not a lot of quality shots for VCU in the first half. 24 points. That is anemic by their standards. Gustafson just came in for Sherrod. Santos Silva in also. 
Jackson is a horrendous free throw shooter. As if to tell his teammates we want one shot, but there's a lot of time left between when they shoot and they didn't get a shot at all. What's the best look for this unit for VCU? Well, Highland's the best shooter, but he is being guarded by Francis. And Highland does not go inside that much, so his height advantage doesn't help him in this situation. Highland kicks. And that includes Bones Highland held scoreless for Mike Rhodes. 0 for 4 from the field. He entered as the league's best outside shooter since conference play began. Every one of his threes have been challenged. Guys hand up on him, rushing him, making a pull on the floor where he doesn't want to go. I mean, the defense is very, very impressive. Spiders have had a reputation the last couple of years of not being solid on defense. Hence the 20 lost seasons. But this game, they have been very good. And we asked Chris Mooney, what's your team doing best right now? He paused, he gave it thought, and he talked about the defense, the man-to-man -man that he switched to after years, over a decade of the matchup zone. And I think what happens in a league, teams get used to playing against the matchup. So if, if Richmond would play somebody outside the league, it would be effective inside the league, not so much. Action on the glass. Santo Silva gets fouled right there. Early, Gilliard thinks that he had his hand on the ball. Gilliard had three steals in the first half. Now, originally, they called it on the floor. And a conference between Wally Ruteki and Lamar Simpson results in free throws here for Santo Silva. How would you like to shoot with those things trying to distract you? Pretty good. Santos Silva works on his free throws. And he's just not a very good free throw shooter, but we were watching him earlier right in this practice session. He was making everything before the game started. Two for two. Not bad. There is Marcus Evans. His enthusiasm, his voice means a lot to this team. Santo Silva, the head man. Jenkins wanted it, caught by Gilliard, pops it up out of bounds. Gilliard just saved an easy play. A good sportsmanship between him and Durante Jenkins here. The pass a little behind as a result gives him an opportunity. That should have been a foul. I mean, he racked his arm twice. The official was not in position to call it. Ariante Jenkins off the screen, steps back. Williams rips it down. VCU looks better already in this game. Halftime speech by Rhodes was pretty good. Two good, solid defensive possessions, and then finally a make by Burns Highland. Gilliard wants it. Golden tries to muscle in. The kick. Francis floats it. Santo Silva, here come the Rams. Francis slow to get up. Five on four. One more. There it is. Jenkins. They are not dropping for VCU and a foul in pursuit of the free basketball. Santo Silva goes over the back. He's giving the thumb to Mike Rhodes, meaning he wants to stay in the game. Right here is after it. A little, uh, not much there, really. He goes to the bench with three. Corey Douglas back in. Lake Francis has the potential to get big numbers in the second half. Golden goes right at Douglas. He understands the geography of the lane. Richmond's got it. The basket.
basketball homes of these programs, separated by just six miles. A sold out crowd. And Richmond, after some sloppy possessions out of the break, get the foul on Van, his first. Golden reads it. Goes baseline and tippy toes there. Makes a nice, nice play. Douglas Stoney was going to go up on the strong side. He went up on the weak side instead. Kale is coming off one of his more efficient games. He had a dozen points in 21 minutes in a rout of LaSalle. The most lopsided road conference win ever for Richmond in their 20 years in the A-10. Wow. This guy, you have to admire his free throw stick to it -iveness. Last year, 58% from the, from the free throw line. This year, 76. That is dramatic improvement. Here you see the series history. VCU has dominated of late, taking 9 of 11. And the foul on KO. Nice foul on the report, Nathan KO. They're going to give another blow here to Golden. He's out, that grace in. You know, even with the number of times he was in and out in the first half, he did play a lot of minutes. And I think this is brilliant by Mooney. He understands his players, and the guys who come in know they're only going to play a short amount of time, so they give it their all, especially at the defensive end. And wanted it. Trying to run end line, Francis denying despite giving up size. Van, without a plan, just puts up a prayer, pops free. Gilliard zips right to the rim. He was corralled when these teams met a few weeks ago. Had just 10 points, didn't get a lot of touches. Oh, nice look to Ward. BCU is one of those teams that could explode at any moment. They take some ill-advised shots when they're behind out of enthusiasm. But they've got to guard one on one. If they don't, they're going to be sunk in this game. And that's way, way too easy. Way too easy. And immediately, Mike Rhodes beckons Keyshawn Curry to go to the table to sub in. Then, the three point woes continue. Two of 13 for VCU. Confidence is gone. Wow! A look to KO. Wow! What a pass! Mark that one down for your highlight reel. How to find a teammate. A plus. Not only that. Four assists, three steals. So the numbers that are on the right-hand side of that score sheet that people rarely look at, they always look at the points. Those are the things you're talking about right there. And there it is, the biggest number, the largest lead for Richmond on the game. Santos Silva wants it, Golden denies. When they played the first time, VCU got off to a dramatic start in the second half, and now Richmond's returning the favor. Santos Silva, tough shot, Curry follow in and out. That's a gamble by Van in the back. You can't do that all the time. If you don't come up with him there, you're going to give up an easy shot. And this has happened with Francis, Richmond's leading scorer, having a horrible day shooting. Yep. He's just one of seven. The experienced guys are doing it. Gilliard, Golden, Sherrod. Curry strip numbers for Richmond. Gilliard. Let's go to the fastest guys. You blink in there by you. VCU in dire need of a bucket. Santos Silva hit. 
That's going to count. Count it. That's going to count for sure. This is good officiating. He gets tripped, and the ball goes in. The two officials look at one another, and they both call it in. Fast break. Two of the fastest guys in the Atlantic 10 coming into your living room. Watch out for those potato chips, man. They're going to knock them over. Free throw miss. And VCU just needs every point it can find. Is the lack of VCU offense impacting its defense? I don't think so. I, I, I think they're just gambling a little too much. You know, there's a time for gambling and there's a time for playing solid. And they're gambling a little too much and giving up easy shots. The first half. Richmond shoots 54%. That's not going to happen. Teams, you let that happen, you're going to lose every game. That's a third foul on Vince Williams, who goes to the bench. A lot of teaching moments for Mike Rhodes today. Yeah. Vince had a broken hand, missed a bunch of games. He's only been back for two since the break. Today, he made his first career start. Haven't seen Burton here in the second. Five to shoot. Francis. Heinlein wants it. Deep three. And his frustrations mount. Not free. Rams on the run. And doubled, Santos Silva kicks, Curry. Floats it up and down. What do you do when somebody steals the ball away from you? Do you go and foul them? Do you hustle back? Well, that's an important thing in basketball, and especially in this game. Well, Burton, not a great outside shooter, a miss. Players tumble to the end. McAllister gets stripped, Santos Silva lying in wait. Gilliard takes the three. We got nine tired players out there. Things can get sloppy, and Highland gives the foul. Crowd wanted an intentional. I gotta tune in to that show. Now, truth be told, you told me you got on the links for the first time in a long time and had a 79. <laughs> How about these passes? They are dissecting the VCU defense. Precision passing. Look at this. 6'10 to 6'5 backdoor cut. Help late. Sherrod's strength takes care of the business. Well, Sherrod trying to salt his game high total. He'll sit at 16. It has been a demolition, a domination for Richmond. A little stagger here at the start of the second. VCU trying to avoid three losses in four games for the first time in two years. Rams have turned it over three times in 40 seconds. Golden. One hard dribble, awkward handoff, nine to shoot. Spin the face. The reluctant pound. Find Sharon float it up. And another whistle. I think that's going to be on Burton. They got a pretty good shot at the end of the shot clock after a very shaky offensive possession. A little frustration for that coach. They're used to winning. They're used to having havoc produce results, and it has not in this game. And they are without a win against the top 100 team on the road. Just lost at home to a team in the 170s in George Mason.
McAllister, the reluctant three goes down. <laughs> Why not? Sharon. There have been plays like that in the game where they are almost turnovers, but not. And the but not part is the most important thing. Another one. Golden. You can feel the fatigue. On each side. Clark, inexperienced point guard in the game. McAllister denied by Burton. And we'll get a timeout. 15 to shoot. Let's have a look at the game summary brought to you by AT&T. What stands out? Well, the three-point shooting obviously is a very major factor in this game, but the field goal percentage of 51 in the upper right-hand corner, that's the main thing in the game. The offense for Richmond has been outstanding. The defense for VCU well below their norm. So here's where the A-10 stands. These are the teams that are in the top 100, including VCU and Richmond. Dayton earlier today, closer than you would expect. Top UMass, Rhode Island crushed St. Joe's that played without Ryan Daly. But this conference has a unique dynamic. The top four teams in the league get a double buy in the conference tournament that can help or hurt those net numbers. This is what happens. 12 plays 13, 11 plays 14 on the opening day. And then the first round, 8 plays 9, 7 plays 10, 5 and 6 play the winners of those first two games. In the meantime, those top four teams are sitting there getting rest in Brooklyn. And there hasn't been a ton of rest in this game. Richmond has been surging, has not known a deficit in the game. VCU has been unable to hit a shot. In dire need of a bounce back after a rough loss when they were killed on the glass by George Mason on the, third. The thing that you mentioned about Dayton having a close game against UMass, that's a good thing. Dayton has played a number of close games, you know, against Duquesne, against Rhode Island. You know, I mean, they, they, it's good that way because if they are blowing everybody out, they're not going to be used to be executing in the end game of a close game, and that's going to happen in the NCAA tournament for them. Whether they're a two seed or a one seed, or whatever seed Dayton happens to turn out, and I think they're they're certainly a two right now. They could be higher by the time the season ends. And they continue to rip off wins in the A-10. They were challenged by final score against Duquesne, blew a large advantage. You had the call when they just dismantled Rhode Island. Yeah, second half was dominant. First half was dominant also at the beginning of the first half. Francis hasn't had much success getting shots to drop if he starts to heat up. Look out, VCU. This is one of those games where everything is going in. You're just going with the flow if you're the coach. Let him go. Who can hit buckets for VCU? Marcus Evans had been struggling. He's out. They turn it over. Sharon having a monster day. Denied. Count it. As soon as the ball hits the backboard, if you touch it, it's basket interference in college basketball. Sharad on the run. Watch the ball. Hits the board, and then it is touched afterward by McAllister. Automatic call. You know, Richmond by 21. Trying to get to 13 games above 500. It began the day in sole possession of third place in a highly competitive and resurgent Atlantic 10. Then the probing dribble. Bones Highland communication off there. Being on the road's just different, right? <laughs> no doubt about it. VCU has had a home court advantage for lots and lots of years. And Richmond in this building, and if it's like this a lot, they're going to have down the stretch a very strong home court advantage as well. Francis feeling it. Highland the weak side board.
McAllister sweeps to the rim. Santos Silva cleans it up. And Mike Rhodes going to call timeout here. That's part of the beauty of college basketball, right? You see such contrasting styles. And here's good on good. A Richmond team that spreads the floor, doesn't turn it over, passes incredibly well, but likes to play half court against a VCU team that wants to pressure you, loves to turn you over, loves to run. Maybe they'll play a third time in the Atlantic 10 tournament, maybe, huh? It'll be fun to see on a neutral floor. Both of these teams, they're two of the three A-10 teams that Jerry Palm had first four out in his latest bracketology pro projection. Indeed, that one was the other one. Out of bounds, VCU ball. And Chris Mooney. Heck of a player at Princeton, graduated in 94. Small forward, solid shooter, passer, scorer. Santos Silva off. You recruited him? Well, yeah, but, you know, I mean, he went to Princeton. Right. <laughs> I didn't like him, frankly. I like him now. When you coach it against the guy, you know, it's hard to like him. Out of bounds. Played for the legendary Pete Carrill, still has a lot of elements of Pete Carrill in their practice routine. Good hands by Deriante Jenkins right there, and a kick by Sherrod. First mistake he's made all afternoon. And they open every practice with 30 minutes of extended ball handling and shooting. Something that Pete Carrill believed in for years. Jenkins drains it. Two fist up. We're going to see full court pressure the rest of the way for sure. See if they can get back into this game. A couple of turnovers, a run out, a three here and there. But they got to make stops now. They can't gamble and then back here gamble. You gamble within 20 feet of the basket, and Richmond is going to hurt you. You got to play solid. Stay between your man and the basket. Make them shoot over you and rebound the ball. We got a timeout on the floor, 10 to shoot when we're back. Here, a great rivalry, the 85th all-time meeting of Richmond and VCU. VCU owned Richmond just a few weeks ago. It's been the inverse today. The Rams haven't known a lead. They've played all game without Marcus Evans, out with a knee injury, suffered on Thursday. Francis. Francis was one of those guys who doesn't remember what happened on the last play. He just plays the next play, which is a great, great attribute for a basketball player. He doesn't cheer too much when he does something good. He doesn't get down when he does something bad. VCU has shot rather poorly all game, and another miss, and another one and done. VCU's not a great rebounding team, so when they're missing in close, can spell some doom for them. That's a weakness for each of these teams, both in the bottom tier in the A-10. Ribbon, three ball, Sherrod, ugly miss. Jenkins trying to Euro down the lane, and he works the contact. Help, help, help. Split shooting it on the way down it was a very, very difficult shot, but he got whacked. So Jenkins, best free throw shooter in the Atlantic 10. He converts. VCU one away from bonus, two on Sherrod, six on Richmond. Golden goes back to the bench. Grace will take his spot. Jenkins converts. Can VCU get some turnovers with Marcus Evans out? This is what they have to do. Pressure, trap in the backcourt. When the ball gets to the front court, they have to play solidly and do not gamble once it crosses the 10-second line. If you gamble, the ball handling and a little guy like this can dominate 
And that's what happens. Just like that. Where was the guy guarding Francis? He didn't help, and he didn't guard his man either. And the Spiders are hitting their open looks and piling on. End line cut, the reverse. Tapped out. Follow off. Santo Silva tip. Here comes Francis. And he draws the foul on Bones Highland. We're seeing made threes for the home team. The cross court pass by Gilliard is right on the money. Nobody challenges. And at the other end, we're seeing misses close in to the basket. Williams and Santos Silva the last two times. Double digit made threes for only the second time since mid December for Richmond. We still have five and a half to go, and KO's going to go back to the line. That'll be number four on Vince Williams. Ko does not shoot the ball outside, but he is their guy who they call his number to get inside plays other than Golden. And Ko last year at the free throw line was a negative for this team. This year he's a positive from 58 to 76 percent for this young man at the free throw line, and that is a gigantic difference. So Ko. Wintered at 79%, misses the first, hits the second. Gustafson in, Sherrod to the bench. In front of a sellout crowd, the third straight for Richmond, a team that's building some swagger and confidence in A-10 play. I think this game is extra special for Sherrod with his history of his family with VCU. Three ball, playing with four fouls. Williams, no. Santo Silva looking for help. Jenkins over Grace. Vince Williams. We give credit to Vince Williams playing with four fouls. He continues to fight for these loose basketballs. But Richmond, such a gaudy advantage, and they have taken such tremendous care of the basketball in this game. They didn't have a lot of turnovers the last time they played either. But in that game, they shot like 30% from the field because they were taking rust off balance shots like that one all the time. Francis off. Williams collided with Bobby Ruteki up the sidelines, one of our officials. Jenkins. Rattles down. No give up in the Rams ever. Continuous energy. But these guys have to be feeling it right now in terms of fatigue. And it doesn't get easier. They'll have a date with Dayton to come at their building across town in Richmond here on CBS Sports Network on Tuesday. Then Santos Silva rolls, gets fed. Oh, nice look, and Williams banks it in. Timeout. I think Chris Mooney is sensing a change of direction in the, the game. Smallish guard to the other smallish guard. Very productive. Ten made threes for Richmond. They're ten for twenty. VCU is four for nineteen. But the Rams. On a seven unanswered run, it has not been a single digit game since the 507 mark in the first half when it stood at nine. That in and of itself would be significant. There's a lot of time left here. Yeah, no doubt about that. And they made the they were down 21 just a couple of minutes ago, right? So they made the run and they've done it by getting some quality shots and lack of effort by Richmond on the defensive glass has helped. But Richmond's offense is just so good. You got to get stops because if you don't, I mean, they're just going to dissect you if you trap them. Going to two guard front here instead of a point guard front. Keeps the whole middle wide open in there. The steal. Nine unanswered for BCU. This is out of a Richmond call timeout. 
That went off Jenkins. That was another almost turnover. This is a tough situation. Sideline out of bounds. This is the things you work on right here. Anticipation by Clark leads to an easy play. You know they're going to gamble. You know they're going to go for steals. So if I'm the coach of that team in the huddle, I'm saying meet every pass. Meet it. Don't run away from it. Billiard. Jump give Sharon. Richmond want to take some time off here. Oh, absolutely. The double comes, Golden. Kick Sharon, extra pass, Francis. That's a quality shot, though. DCU doesn't have time to be too selective. Shoot it and attack the glass. Jenkins turns it over. How about that, Stewart? When you got a guy like Gilliard who leads the country, a guy like Francis says, I see what he does in practice. I'm going to do exactly like him. And this is what he does right here. Just comes from behind and steals that ball using his lack of size to his advantage, closer to the floor, closer to the dribble. So here's the first of the one and ones. Francis, fourth best free throw shooter in the lead. And he misses. Two and a half minutes. Great help, D. Great block out. Some strong fundamentals by the Spiders here. Spread the floor. Keep the middle open for drives. Gilliard saw that double coming. Chris Mooney did not love the timeout. You could see the head coach's shoulder slump. One timeout left. Richmond has scored in three and a half minutes. A lead the balloon to 23. Stands at 13 with 2.06 to go. We've seen uh, more comebacks from greater distance in this amount of time. So this game is not over. What happened on the last play where Gilliard was forced to call timeout, Santos Silva came over to double team. And Golden, who was Santo Silva man, didn't come to meet the pass. He was just wandering away from the ball. So Gilead had nobody to pass to. I think he wisely called timeout. Only one left for Richmond. Golden off the fake, showing the moves. You got that right. Showing the moves. Used his pivot foot beautifully. Went back and forth, across and across the lane. Watch this, watch the footwork. Fakes there, fakes there, steps through without traveling, and knocks it in. Chris Mooney again employs the offense-defense switch. Gustafson in, Sherrod out. He's done that quite a bit here. Out of the corner. Poked out of bounds, Richmond ball. And you're right, Sherrod's coming right back in the game. Mike Rhodes will make his own decision. Williams with four fouls out. Jaron McAllister back in. This series had been dominated by VCU. Wins in 9 of 11 as Gilliard gets fouled. 83% free throw shooting. One and one chance. Isaac Van picks up his third personal. Richmond hasn't had a blowout win over VCU in 17 years. Wow. 2003, they crushed them 70 to 52 at home. It's been an operation today. Santos Silva. Golden getting physical. Santos Silva gets the two. VCU's bench despondent. You can see it on the far side there. 
expressions, the body language, the shoulders. They tell the story of a team that played today without Marcus Evans, and now with a minute to go. On the wrong side of a significant deficit. Santos Silva. And the game started with Sherrod blistering from deep. And his three ball provides a fitting highlight near the game's conclusion. And with the ball in his hands. His grandfather of VCU Hall of Famer. He's got over 20 against the Rams today. Two more. Clark window dressing off. Sherrod's got it. And Richmond splits the regular season series with VCU. The biggest blowout for the Spiders against their crosstown rival in 17 years.